All right, hello and welcome back everyone to another weekly edition of Stock Market Mutterings. This is for the week of 9-17. Hope your trading has gone well. If you need help, as always, feel free to visit the link in list.com. Click on the Trade Room tab and you can start trading with us right away. We had some good stuff we were talking about last week with Roku, SQ, a nice move in Tesla, and finally on Etsy. And we're going to talk a little bit more about those, but first we'll start out here with the market. I'm going to just go over a few things. It just feels like every time the market gets to the highs, you're ready to break out, really kick in that gear. There's a damn tariff tweet. I got to say, it's getting annoying. You get a lot of these positions. You saw some wacky moves here. I'm just going to roll one off the top of my head, which was BA because I happened to be looking at it. It's like, you're just smoothing along right here. You're like, life is good. I'm rolling into money. Everything's happy. And then there's like, what up? A tweet. And then it's just like, Stuff starts dumping. Now, usually the market recovers from that, and it actually it turns out to be a silver lining because these dips are, are buyable. But I have to say, just from my personal opinion, I don't know where you stand. It's not political or anything like that. It's just freaking annoying when you're sitting here and you're trying to make money and you're putting the grind in and the effort and knowing that you're just one tweet away from a potential meltdown you just never know you just never know and like i said in a lot of the happy hours and a bunch of the whiteboard videos i've done that's just one of the things you learn from trading over s several years for me going on two decades now this was something that you never had to think about before was tweets but now that's that's something for several years you've had to plan for just kind of interesting so let's go back forget about talking about it. i just thought i would bring that up it's just it just it seems ironic, right? Every time you get up there, you got to stuff it down with a tweet. Now, the SPY did a pretty good job recovering. Again, you're just sitting right up here. If you look at the Dow, it's got about the same kind of chart. You're just sitting up here right now, ready to take that next level up, possibly moving into the 300s. And I really feel like the, the 300 emotional level wants to get tested first before we see any real correction but again you got this tariff news it just continues to be a dark cloud now one of the things the market has always done is take whatever dark cloud and turn it into happy sunshine like nuclear war with korea brexit elections whatever it might have been that come along they've it, it seemed to have shrugged it off now i can't say that's always going to happen at some point it won't it will correct i mean that's just the way the cycle of life the cycle of the markets the cycle of the world works and it seems like when everything is going good you might as well try to mess it up right that's why guns and roses broke up at the height of their, <laughs> that's why all these great bands break up after they make all these hits and stuff so anyway i just i'm just ranting on let's talk about some levels i think if we can finally push above the highs here from 829 yeah 829 which is 291.74 i think we can start thinking about 300 possibly getting done throughout the, the remain not, probably not in the month of september maybe but early on in october we should see another kick in a rally i wouldn't start to think about selling here or you know correction territory unless you start getting underneath of this 287 37 you got a couple of double bottoms right there 20 moving average is just slightly higher and then you may end up trading down to 284 90 285 actually is 50 moving average but we shall see again the market continues to shrug this off but you never know watch for that break because i think that that break does happen with everything that's on top of it right now you will see a little bit more bullish activity now the stock i've been talking about probably more than anyone in the world that is definitely exaggeration is etsy i don't know why i got a yodel about etsy i was like this with other stocks i get fixated on certain things but i've been talking about this thing for an eternity and it i, I thought it was going to break out back here because it had a really good chart gets sold off curls off of the 10 20 moving average and finally there on friday it finally gets it so if you just do a search of etsy on twitter you're gonna see my my mug there a dozen times because i've just been going on and on and on i still think even though it's a little bit stretched and if you're a swing trader you should be in at 51 on the break here actually 50 60 on on this this high break that's where you should be but i think as a, as a day trader if you hold up here and you see continued strength throughout this 5329 5330s into monday i would expect this to at least get you to 55 before it slows down i know it's stretched up a little bit here but one of the things that you really had here on friday 
was the relentlessness of it. Here's when it finally broke out. And this is why we always talk about levels being so important to stocks. Once it finally breaks that level, you try it early in the morning, got rejected, just come back. As soon as it got through it the second time, you really saw that vert. Now, that tariff news came out, the tariff tweet there, I'll call it, came out there on Friday, started sending things lower. But once it, it stopped, the aggressiveness of the buy here, that's what you're looking at. It's, 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 it's not so much where it is, but how did it get to where it is, for me at least. You come off of 51 bucks, this thing's just jammed straight to 53. I mean, nonstop. Look at this. It just comes right up there. That's aggressive buying. You got good volume for this time of the day, and it finishes off strong. So I do think you see a little bit more steam there coming into Etsy. Now, another one here is Twilo, where you may see the same type of, of move. This is another one of those long-term momentum stocks of the year. I don't know what to call these things, but every year... You get the stock that goes from twenty dollars to one hundred. You saw it with like GoPro. You saw stuff like Rare Earths make make those moves. Last year you had like Fizz, that soda company. It just does that kind of stuff. So this thing has just been relent. I mean, it's just been relentless the entire freaking year. I mean, look at the chart. It's just it's just linear. And now you're sitting up here with what appears to be a triple top breakout on the daily chart. I would find it hard to believe that it does if it doesn't clear this $88 that you're not going to start pressing to the mid 90s, maybe even 100. I wouldn't say it's going to do 100 in September. But maybe, who knows? I mean, it's this one hell of a, a, a looking chart. Do what you want to with it. Now, somebody else here, I want to I want to go the other way. I gave you a couple of longs there. Let me go with a short. And I got to tell you, I love short selling. I love it, love it, love it, love it. But it has been stingy as hell on some of these plays i took my first shot at avav on friday and it was all right i i, I you know it's always nice to make a little bit of money on anything wins a win but you kind of expect more when a stock is so damn stretched like this now this one was another one that's linear here's a here it's like a twilo right i guess 50 bucks to 116 except for on this one you've already made a pretty good breakout at 90 it gaps and goes and it's just been vertical since this this gap up 97 to 118 bucks and, and just just like a week so i was looking for pivots i don't want to go shorting into just rippage anymore like verts like this i kind of want to wait for some rounding like where you get some pivots like this spot here or up here where you can kind of put a stop at high a day that way you don't get yourself burned if it wants to continue to drive up the momentum. But I expect this thing to at least trade back down to the 107s. But, you know, again, it's been that way for about two years now. Shorts like this have been stubborn as hell because every dip just continues to get bought. So any kind of flush, it gets scooped back up. And then when the tariff tweet came out, it didn't do much for the stock whatsoever. It barely budged down. So that remains to be seen. I think, you know, you got to get underneath of 115 now to maybe get some acceleration out of it. But just watch it. You never know what may happen in the world of, of trading stocks. And then how about we look at a little Roku here as well. This was a stock I liked to get on the breakout. Here was your here was your breakout right here at 60, let's just say 65 bucks. And you see like Twilo kind of looks like 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 this before this move. And it kind of it kind of ripped, you know, like like Etsy did. It kind of got up there and one of the things I like to do when you're doing breakout trades or something like that is the daily matters to me because it it dictates the aggression that you take to it. If you got a good looking daily along with a good looking intraday break, then to me that's it's a high probability trade and I want to be a little bit more aggressive on it. When you're taking that same kind of pattern but the stock is already stretched out on the daily. It doesn't mean it won't work, but I just like to back it down a little bit, be a little bit less aggressive, or or be at least cognizant of the fact that the daily is stretched. And this daily was stretched, but over the last three days, it's held up pretty well. I mean, it's sitting here again. It's just kind of, this is a flag. I mean, it's just a, like a rampant camp, and it's been holding up. I think if you move through 72 bucks. It's going to go again. I don't know how. I don't know if you're going to get a good vert like this, but I would imagine you'll at least get some cash flow to the upside in, in, in something like this. That Again, that's, this all remains to be seen. So just kind of a, a brief look. I mean, stuff was everywhere this week. I'll give it that. There was some good stuff. There were some things that I, th I didn't think would pan out. Like, for example, I loved Etsy, but it was taking forever, and it finally got going, so we did well with that one. 
On the flip side of that, one stock I've been talking about a lot was SQ. And I really thought SQ was going to break out there. I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday. can't remember the exact day. But once we got up there sniffing around this 92.65, had a really nice daily chart, big time momentum. Really thought we would see that kick up there. Instead, it's just kind of, man, it's kind of tired out up here. I, I don't know. So maybe that's something to look at. A little bit later maybe it gears back up again I, I don't know kind of thought this was going to be one of those ones that didn't but you know you can't you, you know if you knew what if you knew the outcome of every stock a week ahead of time you'd be the richest person in the world right that's just the way it is so anyway let's kind of go back and we'll look at a little bit more out of Etsy but again keep on keep an eye with you're doing with Etsy here the daily chart got a little stretched out today but I still think there's room to 55 this to a low Hasn't even got its move yet. If it breaks through that, you're probably going to get a good 3 to $5 cash move out of that one. AVAV is a short idea, but again, very delicate short idea. Just kind of looking for a few levels there. And then maybe that Roku. Maybe that Roku's got a little bit of steam in it because those stocks were unaffected by the tweet. So anyway, we'll leave it at that. We'll see how the rest of the week goes. Hard to believe September. September's almost over. We've got like two weeks left in the month. So, you know, that's the way it is. Besides, I just turned 50 this week. And time just flies when you're this age. Anyway, guys, if you need help, you know where I'm at. Visit the LincolnList.com. Click on the Trade Room tab, Trade Well. And if you need help, you can always reach out to me at service at the LincolnList.com. Until next week, take care. Trade good.